So, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Ratul. So, it's a pleasure to welcome our first speaker for the session, Professor Elizabeth Guazali. I hope I'm pronouncing your uh, last name correctly. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so, so, Professor Elizabeth Guazali is a research, director of research for the French National Center for Scientific Research. Uh, she is known for her work in particulate multiphase flows such as granular materials, fluidized beds, suspensions, and sedimentation. Professor Guazali is also an editor of the Journal of Fluid Mechanics. So uh, the floor is yours, Professor Guazali. Okay, so thanks for this introduction. And uh, I'm very honored to be among you uh, today for the, actually for this three day to, to celebrate Bala. And Bala, happy birthday. That's, uh, and I want to, to thank you for all your great uh, scientific achievement and, and also for all your help and the, the devotion you had for the community and everything. So happy birthday and I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to be, to be here. So of course I will talk about particulate flow uh, and uh, of uh, specifically about the falling clouds of particle and vertical flow. And this is something that I did with my, we did in Marseille actually, because we were discussing Marseille in Paris and uh, I'm, I'm working also in Marseille with uh, my colleague Laurence Bergogneau and uh, with a PhD student student, uh, Benjamin Marchetti. And really what we wanted to, we've been doing, trying to do with uh, Laurent since uh, a while and understand the collective effect uh, in particulate flow. And uh, that we are interested in is really now the particle in complex flow. And I've shown, I'm showing here a, a little bit of picture that uh, already we had seen many picture of this type, but um, uh, this is, uh, for, uh, on the top, you, you see a, a dust storm with uh, this very complex and turbulent flow. You have here uh, a river, which is a Rhone River, uh, with a suspension flow, and you can see this kind of plume in, in cloud of particle. And here, uh, on, on, the, on the top right, you have uh, this effect, which is called sundog which is caused by the light scattering from hexagonal ice crystal and cloud, and which is a very spectacular. And uh, what I wanted um, really to, to tell you is that if you think about the collection of particles in complex flow, sometime this particle would be dispersed by the, the very complex flow. And this is a case here. Uh, if you think about the, um, the, the the cloud of the plume of a pyroclastic flow of this uh, volcano uh, in Iceland, I won't pronounce the name, which uh, erupted in 2010. And I wanted to show you just the, 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 the cloud uh, during the different day after eruption. And you see that the cloud, I mean, this, uh, the, the, uh, uh, spend a, a lot of, uh, uh, time and space and and really that you can have a particle we can uh, be dispersed on a very very long distance after uh, due to this uh, uh, eruption now there is sometimes things which are different and um, this is on the right here which is called Langmuir circulation which is due to this uh, which is the cellular structure that you observe uh, at the, on, on the uh, ocean due to the wind, and which in fact, instead of dispersing particle, uh, are, are creating a, a focusing, like here it's form of plankton in, a, in, in certain um, space, in certain location. So really that we are interested here is to look at the, how uh, a collection of particle, uh, which is uh, evolving in a very complex flow under gravity, what will happen to this cloud? Uh, will it maintain a cohesive entity? Will it disperse? Will it be focused? And, and really that we are interested in the interaction between this particle and the flow, but also be, be, between the particle uh, themselves. And uh, so the collective effect, and really to look at the interplay between uh, all this uh, system. And just to, to give a little bit uh, um, 
overview of what has been done before. There have been a lot of work on the cloud dynamic in the Kirsten fluid, uh, first in, uh, in the Stokes regime. And if you think about the cloud, here you, you have a cloud of particle. This is on the right experiment, on the left it's a simulation. And uh, while it's falling in, under gravity, the cloud is seen to undergo an internal uh, toroidal circulation, which is very similar to the Adamar uh, circulation that is found for a spherical drop of every fluid settling in an otherwise lighter thread. And this cloud first uh, remain roughly spherical. It has a leakage of particle in, in the tail, and then it evolved into a torus as you can see here, and then break in two different in a cloud and repeating cascade. And here it's a, just a Stokeless simulation of the experiment. The Stokeless simulation is just the simplest thing you can do using uh, the minimum ingredient, which is the uh, looking at just the interaction uh, between the particle with uh, the minimal, which is uh, the, the disturbance of a particle is going like one over the distance to the center of the particle, and you use just this uh, disturbance to, to, to compute the different interaction between the particle. And, and in fact, um, the main ingredient of this uh, destabilization, because we are in the Stokes regime, is the fact that uh, the, there is a chaotic motion. This is the internal circulation. You see the, the, the two, uh, these vortices. And uh, you, you have a chaotic motion of the particle because of the uh, collective effect because of the interaction between the particle, which lead to an escape from the cloud internal circulation uh, going to, uh, from the cloud internal circulation to, uh, to an, out, uh, an outer uh, line of the flow. And, to, and this is creating a particle leakage, a depletion in the middle, and then um, therefore uh, a toroidal uh, a, a torus, which then will, will uh, expand and, and break. Now, if you increase a little bit the inertia, you have a, a cloud uh, dynamic, which looks similar, but in fact, the cloud uh, deform again in a flat torus, that eventually destabilize uh, and break up in the different droplet, but there is no particle leakage in that case. And this is experiment on the right. This is a simulation using uh, osinlet, which in fact, if you think about one particle, instead of uh, you have uh, actually uh, uh, an interaction between the particle, which differ from the Stokes flow, of course, because the particle has a, has a flow line, which is uh, not symmetric. And uh, there is a, actually the important thing is that there is uh, some uh, wake in the particle. And in fact, the destabilization of the cloud it looks is, uh, is determined by the importance of this wake mediated interaction. And here is a little sketch showing the wake of each particle and if the wake interacting, these wake are attractive. And, and then that means that actually the cloud, uh, because of this interaction is flattening. And then there, uh, there is a, 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 a out of flow, which is going like a one of our square and which is expanding the, the, the cloud. So, um, this is for, for cloud and, and kiss and thread. So now what's going on if you have particle, which are in a, in a, actually in a, in a vertical flow or in turbulence. And there have been some discussion, Marcus had already discussed a little bit this problem. And uh, if you have particle interacting through this vertical structure, and in particular in turbulence, you have different effect like uh, the preferential sweeping uh, around the, the vertical structure, which is shown here uh, on the left. And this has been uh, examined by many people among which uh, Max and other people here. And actually this has been done also experimentally 
And um, experimentally, this is what you have in the right. We have been able to create a simple flow, a simple vortical structure, which is the tail going vortices, and uh, to look experimentally and numerically at trajectory of this individual particle. And uh, what you can see here, and I show you some example here of a particle falling in a vertical flow, and you can see that this particle uh, is uh, zigzagging and it's doing this sweeping around vortices. Sometimes it can be trapped, as you can see, in a vortex. It's trapped for some time and then it will uh, go down. Eventually it will settle uh, and then it will go back and be trapped again. And the important thing is that if we look at this and we've seen that added mass and historic force uh, were found to be negligible. And what is mat matters the most is uh, drag and buoyancy, uh, that if it's nonlinear, with a nonlinear drag, if you have a, a little bit of inertia. Of course, uh, the Stokes numbers of the particle were not that large, but the renal number of the particle can be pretty large. So the, really the idea we had with Laurence was to say, now we have, a, let's say we have a cloud of particle and we're gonna look at the sedimentation of this cloud in the vertical structure. And the simplest vertical structure that we can make is of course uh, this uh, Taylor vortex. And uh, to make them, actually we have this, um, this uh, experiment, which is a, a, a cell, uh, which is here. And uh, you inject a cloud in this cell uh, and we create actually a, a cellular flow, which is generated by electroconvection. Actually you have here, you have two electrodes and so you, so you have electrical current. And on the back of the cell, you have a checkerboard of, uh, uh, of, uh, of magnet of a two centimeter square uh, size. And uh, the interaction between uh, uh, the, the, the electrical field and the magnetic field make a, a force which is Laplace force. And you can get this quasi two dimensional vertical flow and you inject so, uh, your cloud in this vertical flow. So the vortices uh, have a wave number K, uh, and uh, the, the size is typically, as I told you, two centimeter divided by pi. And you see that the Reynolds number of the flow is not so small. You can go from 0.7 to 14. The particle are small particle of PMMA of polystyrene. And uh, of course the Reynolds number is very small and the Stokes, their Stokes number is very small, their size is very small. But if, if you think in terms of a cloud, because we inject a little cloud of particle, the cloud can comprise uh, 300 to 20,000 particle. And uh, the Reynolds number is not that small. Uh, as you can see, it can reach about uh, 17. And uh, actually the Stokes number can reach one. And uh, you have the, also uh, the inertia, which is uh, uh, an, an important parameter that I will mention a little just after is the inertial length and the inertial length can be uh, pretty small, meaning that the, uh, the, the wake between the particle are interacting and there is uh, some uh, uh, inertial uh, coupling between the, of the interaction. So now here, uh, we can track this cloud with a synchronized camera and we can have the tra 3D trajectory of the cloud, uh, of the cloud center of mass. Uh, in terms of numerical simulation, we use something which is the simplest possible, which is a point particle approach. It's a minimal description. We, we have, uh, the first thing that we do in, if you are in the Stokes regime is to say that the velocity of each particle is a, it's a, the velocity of the vortices plus uh, the sedimentation velocity of the of a single particle and and then uh, we add the interaction between the different particle by using their 
the uh, disturbance to the flow, which is the stocklet in that case, which is one over R, uh, something which is order one over R in Stokes flow. When we have inertia, there is an additional par parameter, which is the inertial length. And, um, uh, and uh, of course, uh, we can do the same thing, but instead of having a stocklet, uh, we're using osinlet, which describes the fact that uh, the disturbance uh, due to the particle is not, uh, we are not anymore in the Stokes regime. So there is um, a wake, uh, which is described by this uh, inertial length. Uh, so I want just to show you some uh, experiment and comparison with a uh, uh, simulation we did. And here it's in the uh, Stokes regime. And you can see that this is the experiment and this uh, simulation here, you can see the zigzagging motion due to the modulation caused by the uh, periodic cellular flow. The cloud is a stretch in the elongational region of the flow. The elongational region are uh, on the, 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 the different corner here of the, of the, 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 the flow structure. And you can see that there is um, no breakup because uh, the travel distance of the cloud is not long enough. And you, you can see also that um, there is some leakage and there is a good agreement between uh, the point particle simulation uh, use and uh, the experiment using the stockless uh, approximation. Now, if you want to be more quantitative, we can look at the time evolution here of the vertical and the horizontal uh, coordinate of the cloud center of mass, the velocity of the cloud and uh, its projected um, uh, surface in the horizontal plane versus uh, time. You can see that the mean setting velocity of the cloud is similar to what observed when falling in a uh, kiss and thread that the, and the cloud here you can see slow down and accelerate uh, respectively when it uh, and simultaneously it's expanding and shrinking when it falls through the successive upward or downward respectively elongation portion of the flow. And uh, you can see that simulation, the simulation, we, we did some simulation and actually because it's a, a system which is a, a very sensitive to, um, to the, the, the initial position of the cloud, we, we can try to, to, to average, to do different simulation positioning the cloud uh, uh, in different position. And you can see that uh, it's work, it's, uh, the simulation are giving really uh, a good representation of the flow and in particular of the slowdown uh, or acceleration when it's going through, through the, the the successive elongation of portion of the flow. Now, if we are in a, in a, with inertia, you have a stronger cloud deformation. You can see through the elongation portion of the flow and uh, the cloud uh, expand and then break in different pieces uh, and the point particle simulation using uh, the oscillet approximation can capture the phenomenon. It also can capture things quantitatively. And um, of course you can, and you can see here that you can capture with the simulation, the uh, oscillation of the, of the flow. You can see here the horizontal coordinate versus time, the velocity versus time. It's a little bit more difficult. Uh, it's not so good to capture the, the, the projected surface oscillation. But what is interesting is that uh, you have a doubling here of the period in that case, which is a sign of the successive slowdown and acceleration during the fall of the cloud through the, the vertical structure. So uh, to be a little bit more uh, precise about the, what's going on in comparing the Stokes regime and the finite inertia regime. Uh, it's uh, the settling uh, of uh, this, uh, the cloud 
uh, and uh, so on the top, you have the Stokes regime. On the bottom, you have the finite inertia regime. The black arrows are the original PIV flow field. And uh, in blue, you have the perturbed flow field. So you can see that um, there is the, uh, when the cloud is falling down, it's pushing when, when it's, it, it can push the, the different vortices and, and modify strongly the, the flow structure. And uh, you can see the oscillation between the expansion and contraction of the cloud. You can, uh, when settling in the successive upward and downward uh, portion of the flow. Here it's, uh, and you, you can see it particularly uh, in the initial case, and you can see that uh, it's really highly deformed. Here you have uh, this large expansion, like here, that you, you, we, can, we can see, uh, and which are really enhanced in the uh, Ossine case. Now, another thing uh, which is important is to understand uh, the physical mechanism leading to the breakup. And this is a visualization of the flow field in the cloud reference frame for a typical uh, ocean led simulation. And uh, uh, in, uh, in white, uh, you have the uh, uh, large velocity region and in black, the low velocity region. And uh, when inertia is finite, uh, the oscillation between the expansion and the contraction phase is no longer reversible and the cloud expansion becomes stronger like you can see here it's uh, and uh, when the cloud uh, reaches an upward elongation region of the flow uh, the breakup then happens like here uh, and uh, and because the widened cloud winds around the vertical structure uh, and the remaining pieces of the cloud are spread in the flow structure. So really what you can see, it's that the vertical structure are inducing a faster breakup of the cloud into multiple shatters in this finite inertial case. And that really is a, the reason for that is really uh, due to the stretching, expansion and contraction phase and the stretching of the cloud in the uh, elongation uh, portion of the flow. So I want to just to give some concluding remark and show you an, an, another movie. So we have really done this uh, joint experimental and numerical study uh, to, uh, to look at the, the settling on cloud and vertical structure. And really the idea is to look at the interplay between the collective effect of the particle and the uh, interaction between the particle and the structure. Uh, you see that uh, the point particle simulation, which is the simplest modeling possible, uh, is working really well. And uh, the, uh, of course, we observe the zigzagging motion and the successive expansion or shrinking of the cloud when it's settling to the successive upward and downward elongation portion of the flow. This is an important point. And really the important thing is the identification of a mechanism of expansion and contraction leading to uh, this disintegration of the cloud and this breakup of the cloud. Uh, what is important also is to understand that uh, collective effect, collective, another message is collective effect is maintaining uh, the uh, the cloud entity sometime uh, uh, and it's mainly it's really maintaining the cloud uh, as a single entity and uh, in the experiment of course we had cloud which were smaller that, than uh, the um, size of the vortices but in the in simulation we can play with that and here what I've, uh, I show you is a simulation here with a small cloud uh, this this one is a small cloud. This one is a bigger cloud with the same number of particles, which are 500. And here, this the same big cloud, but with more particles. And uh, on each of the simulation on each side, 
I've, I've, I have made a novel simulation, but where I switch off the collective interaction. And that you will see is uh, that uh, the, the really the, the, the difference uh, in, uh, in, in the, so you can see here that the cloud are settling. Of course, in the simulation where there is no interaction between the particle, the particles are very small, so they don't go very far. Um, but what is interesting is to say when you increase the, the number of particles, you can see, for instance, here that uh, the, the collective effect between the particles maintain the cloud as a single entity. And uh, but uh, anyway, uh, eventually the cloud would break into pieces, like you can see here break into pieces later and each pieces can break again and due to the elongation of region of the flow. So really there is this competition between the breaking, which is due to the elongation part of the flow and the collective effect between the particle, which is somehow is maintaining the, uh, the, the, the cloud as a, as a singular entity. So I think uh, I'm, I'm stopping here and um, I hope uh, you, you, you were interested by this uh, little experiment and simulation and uh, I'm, I'm happy to have questions. Yeah, so sure. thank you, Professor Elizabeth for a very nice talk. So uh, the floor is now open for questions. Uh, you can unmute yourself or you can raise your hand. You can just ask. You can also type questions in the chat. We have time for, uh, we have about four minutes of time left. I have a question. Um, uh, Babet, um, you nicely um, explained uh, uh, the compression and the dilation not uh, reversing itself um, yeah. as the main cause. Uh, uh, why in a non-Stochasian regime it would spread more? That was very crystal clear. Um, but this uh, irre irreversibility, um, how much of that role is interparticle collisions and how much of it is uh, a fluid mediated uh, inertial interaction, uh, uh, which causes the uh, biggest contributor to- What do you, you mean, know, uh, the biggest contributor for, for, for what, for the- so in other words, do these particles collide uh, and that collision uh, is irreversible or it is just hydrodynamic interaction between the here, particles? Here it's just hydrodynamic interaction actually. Uh, in, of course in the stock, what, what, and it's a sort of two-way coupling because, uh, uh, but very sim simplified because what we do is we look at that we just add the different interaction due to the, the other particle through the fluid. So in the Stokes regime, it's a stoclet, but in the inertial regime, we use a nothing lead because it has a wake. Uh, so, so it's purely the hydrodynamic. There is no uh, collision in the sense that, uh, which may happen in a gas or uh, in, in a, for particle which are much more inertial, I would I would expect. Yeah. Thank you. Anubhav, you have a question. Uh, hi. Uh, I just had a question regarding. So here, the particle inertia is assumed to be negligible. Stokes is zero. Am I right about that? I'm sorry. What so do you mean? In uh, these, uh, is Stokes assumed to be zero, right? Your particle inertia is negligible. No, oh, oh, pretty small, pretty small. So but I just not... wanted to hear your... Yeah, so my question was, I would, I just wanted to know your thoughts, like in the cellular flow, if mm -hmm. one were to include particle inertia, there would be these preferential concentration. But so somehow... how would the interaction... Yeah. Somehow there is, because... Uh... You can capture that with this uh, vertical flow. It's a very simplistic vertical flow, but you can capture that because somehow you have preferential region of the flow, uh, you know, which are like here, 
you have preferential region of the flow which are which are uh, experienced by the particle. Hmm? But, but in the model, just a, a Stokes zero model, right? So that no, no, uh, yeah, it's not com no, it's not uh, completely Stokes zero, huh? but uh, we we've seen the Stokes is very small. <laughs> But the but the inertia is uh, with with the oscillator. The inertia is uh, not that small because uh, you can have some inertia due, uh, and you can have some wake, you know. But of course, Thank it's uh, it's a very simple modeling, uh, and my, I think that will be interesting is whether this phenomenon also are seen. Uh, in, in more complex flow than than this vertical uh, Taylor green vortices, you know. So uh, yeah. So uh, Muhammad Hussein, could you just kindly uh, ask your question? Uh, we are running slightly short of time. But oh, maybe. yes. Thank Sorry. you. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Gazelle. This is Mohammed Hussein Kasbai Hi. from Arizona State University. Very nice talk. Um, so I had two questions, sort of along the same line as the question of uh, Bella. Do you know what the volume fraction is within the cloud? Um, did you um, compute that, the volume fraction oh, within the cloud? In, in the experiment, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, what was in, it? In the, in the simulation, it's point particles, so it's, <laughs> it's tricky. Uh, it's supposed to be something very dilute, of course. Uh, uh -huh. but, in, but somehow, what, what is important, and maybe I can show you that uh, in the model, um, uh, if I, okay, so uh, so you see this is this is a model here, and uh, in the model you, you have the the size of the particle, you, you uh, and uh, the inertial length, for instance. But uh, it's true that uh, you don't have really you have the number of particles that you put in in your cloud in the beginning, which is giving you somehow. The uh, the volume fraction. This is something that mm -hmm. which which will be equivalent. Okay. Um, so my other question is, um, in your last slide, I think it was very interesting to see how the particles sort of trickle down and uh, make these very elongated uh, structures, right? So yeah. sort of elongated <clears throat> cluster filaments. Um, I was wondering if you had a you know, not just a, an initial spherical cloud, but if you had a constant inflow of particles, mm -hmm. how long would these filaments would be? Is this something that uh, you looked at? No, no, we, we look just at cloud, not cloud, but uh, yeah. it may be that they are very long. And there's this, uh, you know, in turbulence, they, people are talking about caustic and things like that, which mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. where, where the particle accumulate and they, they are in this caustic. And, and we wonder whether the, what we see in the simplest flow with this, also with the simplest modeling uh, is something similar to what's going on in, in this really more, more complex flow, yeah. Right, I thought that this setup is very interesting because we do simulations of turbulence with particles and so on. And we see that some of the clusters that are sort of, sort of dilute, like you're, what you're showing here, uh, filament, they're very long. They can be a meter long for particles that are just 50 micron okay. in size. Right? So, so what's, what's the upper bound on how long these filaments can <laughs> oh, be? No. It could, it's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, oh. We are kind of uh, Thank you very much. behind time. So uh, maybe you could uh, continue your discussion in the chat window if you would like. So, uh, okay. Yeah. okay. So, so very sorry about this. So.